special Mary Tippi Hedren, star of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds and many, many other great films. She was a fabulous actress. During a visit to Africa, where they discovered an abandoned gamekeeper's lodge inhabited by a pride of lions, Noel and Tippi were inspired to make a film about big cats to highlight the need for conservation. They grew up on holiday in Africa and, and they saw a, a bunch of lions occupy a, an empty property and it gave them an idea, well, what if this happened, you know, and lions and tigers we could take over. On the way into Africa on the plane, they said, you know, hey, let's make a movie about that. So we're all sitting around the table and uh, Dad and Tippy say, you know, hey, listen, we make a movie with lions. Do you guys want to be in it? And it's going to be about this guy who's studying lions or something in Africa. And we go, well, yeah. They were just like, oh, we'll give it a go. It'll be all right. You know, what's the worst that could go wrong? We all figured we'd be working with Hollywood trained animals and, you know, what, that, that'd be fun. And then they tried to basically shoot this film around their real lives with these cats. That's a real home movie. The film told the story of a lion expert in Africa whose family come to visit but is set upon by lions when they accidentally get separated. So of course, we were very excited about it. We thought this thing was going to be the biggest movie ever made. And Dad was very passionate about it. So we started interviewing lions, but then found out that no two lions would get along in Hollywood. And the animal trainers wouldn't get along. So that was our first stumbling block. So the only option was to raise their own. So they go and see an expert. And the expert said to them, well, look, if you want to make this movie, what you need to do is you need to live with lions and you need to raise them from cubs. And that's all they had to think needed. So that is what Marshall and Hedra did. With their children, including Hollywood actress Melanie Griffith, they decided to raise these lions and they took over their life. That's a recipe for massive disaster. <laughs> oneself in danger from wild animals but it was totally mad they love the animals but they're not trained they can just turn but they didn't just get a couple of lions we had 150 big cats 150 wild animals lions tigers leopards cougars the director of Wizard of Scott, the more the merrier. 150 untrained. I think that's the key there, untrained. They were taking over the house and they were wandering around the neighborhood. Before filming even began, they started to have money issues as the cost of housing their growing collection of animals ballooned. Noel and his family had to sell their home and relocate to a compound in Acton, California. We had kept borrowing money and then we'd sell a house and just anything to keep the project going. He sold their house and they lived on a reserve. Their newly acquired Californian game reserve doubled as the African setting for the film. And after six years of pre-production and with 150 new feline family members, they finally set about filming. Noel especially really threw himself into this film. Okay. Oh. Oh. It's just playing, I'm telling you. But it will get killed. The cat's got a little explosion in the there of being tackled by a lion kind of rolling around on the ground with it there is no way that i would put myself in that situation even if they lick your face on the first take they'll bite it off on the second when you get up it's crazy wow you as a viewer don't ever feel safe watching him with them but for a film with so much potential danger health and safety seem pretty low on the agenda in hollywood typically you have two trainers for every lion if you do a scene. We'd need 300. There weren't 300 crazy people that were willing to go out there and work with them. So what Dad did in order to raise money is he said, the first day of filming, we're going to make the most amazing photography and shot that we can do. I got to go help your uncle. The plug is good. And so it's the scene where Dad is breaking up a fight with Togar and this big uh, full-grown male lion. <laughs> very closely he gets bitten and then he shakes his hand and you don't see the blood at that point because it had just happened they're not used to lights cameras people fighting interacting i mean what on earth did they expect he seems to think that by going ah, 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 
and flapping his arms will kind of stop the Batat King. And then he went back in again, but the lion he was Casey, I think, came back after him. What saved him was there was a little tree branch that he was able to bring down and stuff it into Casey's mouth. <laughs> Situation. It's the behavior of a madman, that is. Once they get intense like that, they don't remember who, you know, raised them, who they love or not. There's an old idea, which is, would the director be willing to do what they are asking you to do? And I think Raw really exemplifies that. What it doesn't exemplify is any actual consideration given to whether or not that's a good idea. Tigers, lions, these massive, beautiful cats, they're not actors. They can't be directed. They're just seeing a human, and right, I'm gonna have you in a minute, mate. Your lunch, your dinner, and your dessert. But Noel's injury on the first day of filming was just a drop in the ocean. Some of the injuries on this are horrific. We're the most dangerous movie ever made, and always will be. There were over 70 injuries on set of Roar, and honestly, it's kind of a miracle there went more. You hear screams every so often where somebody get bitten, but unless you went to the hospital, it didn't count as one of the 70. I got 56 stitches in the head, and it took six guys 25 minutes to get the line off of me. My brother Jerry got bitten in the crotch and the, and the leg. Dad, I used to joke that he liked getting bitten because he was doing the scene in the bathtub and Donnie came and bit him in the neck really bad. Then he got bitten in the leg really bad. It's inevitable that someone is going to be injured when you've got 150 untrained big cats on a movie set. Why would they want to put themselves through it? It's quite beyond me. They're wild animals. We should never have been doing this. The director of photography was scalped. There's a picture of him which is truly horrific. From the nape of his neck to the top, ripped off. Oh, fucking hell. Wow. And it wasn't just the big cats taking out the human cars. <laughs> Tippy got her leg crushed by the elephant. The elephant picked Tippy up and snapped a leg. <laughs> she was screaming. I mean, cat rule in the film. You don't think of elephants as being the dangerous ingredient in this mix. She got black gangrene. And then she got bitten in the back of the head. These are just a series of terrible decisions. Melanie! Get her off! Melanie got clawed here pretty bad. No, no! That's Tippi Hedren's daughter being rushed off to hospital after an encounter with essentially a family pet. She had to have reconstructive surgery. I don't know how you get over that trauma. Well, she married Antonio Banderas, so something must have been okay. I can't even imagine. The, the fear that they must have felt every single day. I couldn't watch it more than every two years because I'd have nightmares for like two weeks after it. How everyone involved didn't die is an absolute mystery. You know, health and safety wasn't about in them days, were they? What were they thinking? But it wasn't just horrific injuries that plagued the production. The biggest disaster we had on the film was the flood that happened in 1978. We saw this wall of water about six feet tall coming down, and it just took the travel trailers away, it took editing equipment away, it completely wiped out the set, and it caused about $3 million worth of damage and set us back about eight or nine months. It was pretty devastating. But after being plagued by natural disasters, financial woes, and countless injuries, the film was finally finished in 1981, and had taken a whopping 11 years to complete. 11 years to torture people, terrify people on set. And it was absolutely dreadful. I'd have been 11 days and gone, ooh, bye. I cannot imagine what it was that drove Noel Marshall to do this, and for Tippy to agree to it. It's estimated that the final cost of the largely self-funded film was $17 million. $17 million is a lot of money. I don't even know how true that real number is because we had put some money in to keep the animals and pay for them until they died of old age. So three or four million might not have been spent on the film. And when the film finally hit the big screen, it was less of a roar and more of a meow. The film probably lost $10 million. It was pretty much ignored, really. It made about two million at the US box office. That's not enough, obviously. It was a big, big loss, and, and we never really recovered much from it. All that danger, and it flopped anyway. And lost how many limbs and how much blood, I don't know. I enjoyed it at the end of the day. 